Praise the Lord, everybody. My name is Sean Henry Scott, Senior, the Apostle, here with Christian Epistles Living Talk Show, live with Dr. Hunter of Total Life Ministries. And she's just so good, we just got to keep bringing her back. People are getting blessed. You know, people call me and speak in Chinese. I don't know what they're saying, but I guess they're getting delivered. More than awesome words. She's like, dang, dang, what? Huh? <laughs> so we're just glad to have her back, and she's welcome to come back as many times as she wants. I've actually heard from other pastors who are interested in coming. Um, you need to put up or shut up. Quite frankly, because you got to get this word out. That's just all. When this word goes out, he said it will not return unto him void, but it will do something. Amen. And um, she's going to just talk about what she talked about. We're going to just let her flow. You know, I trust totally in the Holy Ghost and the God in her. And she has some of her wonderful congregation. Some of them are Michigan fans and Ohio State fans. We're not going to, we're going to get on that at a later date. <laughs> but we look forward to an awesome word. And uh, prayerfully, you'll be blessed. Good. I'm glad to be here today, Sean. Pastor Sean, we're glad to be back with you all. Today we're going to talk about maintaining our deliverance after we help a person or we cast out spirits or they come and get filled with the Holy Spirit and they're delivered. Uh, we'll find out as they go along that there's other things in their life that they need to get deliverance from. So we're going to talk about that today. But before we get into the seven steps, it's about seven basic steps that an individual should keep in mind when they're trying to hold on to the deliverance that the Lord has given them. But before we get into that, we're gonna uh, take a few questions and then we're gonna go through these seven steps. I brought my notes today. So. Letter from the audience. Is deliverance available to anyone? The question is, is deliverance available to anyone? Salvation is available to anyone then that would let us know that deliverance is available to anyone that would want deliverance. As long as they come to the Lord for help, and they want help, they believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he died for our sins on the cross, uh, deliverance is available, and God wants to deliver everyone. A lot of people uh, are not being delivered because they're not coming to him. They must first come uh, believe that he is and that he's a rewarder to those who diligently seek him, and if we seek him and want help, God will help anyone and everyone. So it is a better. Anybody else? Okay, in the Bible it says uh, how when the Spirit comes to you, when he leaves, it comes back to seven more. Uh, even stronger than him. How can we prevent that from happening? Okay. That's a good question. As a matter of fact, that's what we're going to cover later. But I want to say before we get into those things that we need to do, if a person is filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, that's going to be your first, after we cast, sometimes we feel bad as pastors, as leaders, people tell us to help people, we will pray for folk and they will get delivered. But if they're not at a consistent church and have a church family or a pastor submitting themselves under authority, we can cast our spirits and maybe we'll see that person later on and they're in worse shape. So we want you to know that after you cast these spirits out, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit because he is the keeper and he can keep these things out of us. You can't do it on your own and you need to be under good leadership, somewhere under a good church, have a good church home, submit yourself under authority, obeying your pastor. Uh, if not, you can be open to Mark, Matthew 12 talks about it. I think somewhere around the 43rd to the 45th verse, it talks about when the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walked through dry, uh, walked through dry places, seeking rest. And if he can't find another person to embody, they will come back because they will always these demons always refer to the individuals that they have been in previously as their home or house. They will try to come back to that house. And when they come back, they don't come back alone. They come back with reinforcements. So you want to be filled with the Spirit. Yes. Next. When a person is saved, is deliverance automatic? When they get filled with the Holy Spirit, from everything that they know, they're pretty much delivered at that time. Because uh, while they're praying to be filled, some people still believe that you can call on the name of the Lord and be saved. Holy Ghost can fall on you. You can be baptized. You receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, however, people 
or field, whatever it is in their life at that time that they are needing to give up, when they repent and tell the Lord that they give the Lord their life, He pretty much takes anything at that time. But as we go on in our Christian walk, we will find out that we gave up everything we knew at that time. As we go, we'll find that there are other things that we need to be delivered of. And so, uh, deliverance is, uh, I say salvation, is not an event, it's a process. And so, daily we have to learn to walk and live this life, this Christian life. So. Is that goes along with the fact that it says we sin daily? Well, uh, we shouldn't, but in our in thoughts and deeds, we don't willfully sin. Let's say it like that. Oh, uh, right. But you can still, daily we need the, the, the grace of the Lord, the mercy of the Lord, because we can think the wrong thought or buy into a thought that is not ours, or Anger. we can lose our temper, or, you know. But we, we, we at, at the, even with anger, as we mature in God, but a, a, a Christian first coming in wouldn't know this, uh, they get angry, and the Bible says, get angry and sin not. But as we go on, Ephesians eventually told us when we come mature in the Lord, it said, now put off anger. And there come a time as a Christian, and we learn just to put it away. But uh, that takes some time, it takes some teaching, and it takes some deliverance. So uh, it's not something that we would look for a baby Christian to do overnight. You know, but those of us been saved long as I have been, you would look for me to know how to put anger aside. No. Shouldn't be punching people. With no, it shouldn't be fighting. Shouldn't be, you know, cussing. Shouldn't be, uh, you know, punching somebody out. That kind of thing. For a lot of reasons. Too old. It take longer to heal when you get old. Too. And then even if you were, if you're not fighting physically, and if you're not uh, physically saying a lot of stuff, anger is something that the older we get, we really want to get rid of it because it works against your own body. Yeah. People can have strokes, heart attacks, and all this kind of stuff. It it's yes, it's something that we really don't need. So we want to learn early to get. Remember now, the Bible said the created the days of your youth before the evil days come. So we want to try to get rid of all of this stuff as young as we can before we get too old, because they say the saying is you can't teach an old dog new tricks. But uh, it, it is kind of easier the younger you are. You can bend a tree while it's young. But even if you're older and you got saved when you're old, they're still helping to deliver us for you. The Lord will take these things away if you go through these steps that I'm going to talk about. Okay, so uh, we'll go through and start with these steps. I'll take my glasses off. To see. <laughs> to, to, I don't need them to. <laughs> I don't need glasses to, to, to see, to read, praise God. But the first step that I want to talk about today is. Uh, and being and maintaining deliverance after that these spirits have been cast out or whatever problems that you've been having there's all kind of things for everybody's different and people are in the church world we're not talking about people that's not saved because we know that the devil has them but in the church world it is such a tragedy from negative and poor teaching that we've received in times past that once a person got saved they didn't have any more problems and they never had an argument and never had a disagreement with these are just lies because I'm just going to be real about it tongue and teeth fall out and so there's going to be some problems in your walk with Christ but we're going to teach you today how to maintain deliverance after that uh, so maybe you have went through the process where your pastor had to cast some things out which a lot of people churches don't even really understand that that needs to be done we're praying some things we're praying some time when some things need to be cast out. And the Lord didn't say pray it out. He said cast it out. He said we will cast out devils. These signs shall follow them that believe in the name of Jesus. We will cast out devils. We will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And we will speak with new tongues. So the first step, if you have went through deliverance, you received the Holy Spirit in your Christian walk and want to maintain that deliverance is to give yourself completely to God. This is the first step because a lot of times people don't understand and they will feel that they can go straight back and just continue to be the same way that they used to do and be to do the same things they used to do, hang out with the same people they used to hang out and that kind of thing. But to do the same thing that you've always done and expect something different is insanity. See, so we're going to tell you now you're going to have to make some changes and the first change and the most important change is to give yourself completely 
to God. Submit yourself, the Bible said, to God, and then resist the devil, and he will flee. Many times in our Christian walk, people are trying to rebuke the devil. I rebuke you, Satan. I rebuke Satan's not going anywhere, and you have not submitted your life to the Lord. You're wasting time. Okay. So the first thing is you're going to have to give yourself completely to the Lord. And that means that he's Lord, he takes control over every part of your life, all that you know. The second step is to put on the whole armor of God. Um, now, how do we put on the whole armor of God? I'm going to tell you how to do it. Because we quote these things, they sound cute in the pulpit when we're preaching, but yet we still see people are living a defeated Christian life. And many uh, preachers are even preaching a defeated gospel. But the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation as deliverance. And you can live a life of deliverance from sin. He will free us from sin. You shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. So when we put on the whole arm of God, in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, the Bible gives us some verses where uh, it lets us know uh, to, that we can stand, having done all to stand, stand that we can stand against the wiles of the devil but in every one of these verses there are seven pieces of armor that a christian should put on and if we put these pieces of armor on daily we will not have to worry about the enemy coming back in and overthrowing us all of these pieces of armor are dealing with our mind when Apostle Paul wrote this, he looked out at the Roman army and he realized they had a shield of faith. He'd seen the, the loins gird, gird, they were girded up. He'd seen a helmet of salvation. So we'll talk a little bit about this very quickly. Uh, I'm a teacher, so it takes me a minute or two to go through these things, but I'm going to go as fast as I can. Uh, the first the, out of this, this is part two in maintaining deliverance. The Bible said, gird up the loins of your mind. See? Your loins girt about with the truth. He's talking about our mind. Even in Romans 12, it said, Present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is the reason of the service. We know that. And it said, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of our mind. Our mind is like a cassette tape player. If we don't put, continue to renew it daily, it will hit rewind and go right back. To the things that it used to think about and a lot of times people have misled us when i came up years ago they had us thinking that when we got saved our mind got saved but your mind didn't get saved that same mind that you had before you got saved will be there if you don't renew that mind transform it by the scriptures you will get come into church you will speak in tongues and you'll still be just the way you used to be and that's what we don't want you to do. So we, we want to gird up the loins of your mind. You want to put on the breastplate of righteousness. Now, we don't have any righteousness of our own. Our righteousness is as fifth the rag. But the scripture says that we are the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. So now we can claim God's righteousness because we're his children. So you want to get up in the morning and put your spiritual armor on just like you put your natural clothes on. Most of the time, Christians get up and go out to, to work or whatever they do and they never put the armor on. And, and if you and it's no different than if a person would get up in the morning after they take their shower, their bath, brush their teeth, they put some clothes on and they don't go outside. If you do go outside uh, without any clothes on, then they, you, the police are going to come and get you. So now what do you think of the spirit? It's no different. The devil is waiting to, to, to take you captive if you don't have your armor on. It would be possible for us to expand on what you know, on righteousness goes. I know even some might say, okay, how do I put on righteousness? Well, the first thing we're going to say with putting on the whole armor, in your prayer life daily, you should get up and say, I put on the whole armor of God. It should come out of your mouth. Right. You should put your armor on by getting up in the morning and you say, I gird up the loins of my mind with truth. This morning, Father, I put on the breastplate of righteousness. My, I put on my feet, I put on my shoes with the preparation of the gospel of peace. When you're thinking about all of this, every all of these things are dealing with your mind. Because it said my feet are shod or I'm putting on shoes with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You're talking about how you're going to walk. Let's talk about your Christian walk. You have to prepare to walk a righteous life. You can't just 
jump up and just go out the way you used to be. But you have to think you got to prepare by the word. Um, you have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. See, everything's dealing with your mind. You got to think about the word. What would Jesus do? Everybody got the cute little pens and different things, WWJD. But then you'll see something else, even in traffic. Then be on the bumper, and then we'll have road rage because we're not thinking about what we're getting ready to do. So we got to really get our mind girded up now that we're a Christian. We got to think how we're going to act, what we're going to do. We're going to be biblical. We're going to do what the Word of God says. We're going to be obedient. Uh, and then the shield of faith quenches all the fiery darts. What is that saying? The devil is going to attack you from the time you get up in the morning with thoughts, negative thought patterns. Even Christians will go back to that negative way of thinking. The world's against me. This one doesn't like me. All of this kind of stuff. When the real problem is in the mirror, the person in the mirror, that's your problem. It's not other people. You don't need to point the finger, but you need to bring yourself where you're supposed to be and believe the truth. A lot of Christians are believing negative things like that. I can't make it, or I just don't know what I'm going to do. See, you're receiving those thoughts. Every thought that comes to our mind is not our thought. It's coming from the devil, some of these thoughts, and we don't have to receive them. And so if you put on uh, the shield of faith, it quenches the fiery darts. I mean, if I'm going out, basically what that's saying is, I'm leaving this morning my house with the faith that God is going to bless me to have a good day. Right. I don't want to just have the days like I had before I got saved. Uh, we'd end up at the bar. It would be so bad. Come on, somebody. We'd have to go at noon and go to the bar and get a sip to just keep it, just to keep it together to finish. So we don't want to continue to live like that. So to, now we are because we're thinking different. We're getting rid of the stinking thinking, and that's a message within itself. The helmet of salvation is still dealing with the mind. I've got to protect my mind. I can't allow every thought to 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 impede and get into my heart. See, because thoughts will bring on feelings. Feelings bring on actions. Actions then will become a lifestyle. You have to be real careful with that. So I've got to guard my mind. Basically, that's what the helmet of salvation does. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. That's the sixth. And then the Bible said, praying always with all supplication, prayer, praying in the Holy Ghost. It said, watch with all perseverance and supplication uh, for all saints. So basically, that's a lot of times they don't talk about that seventh piece. But then i got to pray in the Spirit, in the Holy Spirit. You, the, you've been filled with the Holy Ghost. You have a prayer language. You need to learn to pray daily in your prayer language because what that does it edifies you, builds you up to where you can fight and stand against the devil. That's the second step. The third step is um, getting getting into the Word of God. This is the only way I'm going to be able to renew my mind. The Bible said, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be made ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. So I've got to study the Bible. Before I can study it, i got to read it first, see. Some people don't want to even read. They say they study, but you're going to learn to read the Bible. You should have a daily Bible reading. You know, if you start, you can read through the whole Bible in a year. Now, after you read, you may read a little bit in the morning on your break or when you get home. After you read a while, now you want to go into what you call study. When you study, you want to ask questions of the text. What is the text saying? Who is it talking to? Why did Jesus say that? What? Why did he move like that? What did he do that for? As you're praying and you begin to study and you ask questions in your mind, the Lord will answer you right through the scriptures. You got to have a relationship with God. People are reading, but they're not. They're not getting anything out of it because they don't know that they should be asking questions of the text. So you're gonna learn to study the word, and after you study the word, read the word, you got to meditate. Meditation then is. After I've read the word, I will go around pondering some things in my heart. So, Lord, now you said this, and you just walk around all day thinking about these things. This is how you keep the Lord on your mind all day. People think that you have to go to work with a Bible in front of you. You're not going to have a job <laughs> if you do that. You're not gonna run. You, you don't go to the job to read the Bible. You go to the job to work. But in your mind, while you are working, you can think on the scripture and on the word of God when the enemy comes in like a flood, 
the Lord will raise up a standard against the enemy when you begin to meditate in your mind and say, Lord, I'm having a hard time here as I'm praying, but your word said I could do all things through Christ to strengthen me, so I believe I can make it through the day. You've got to meditate on the things that you're studying about, and then you after getting in the Bible and learning the word, it's one thing to read it, it's one thing to study it, but the next step is to confess the word. And this is where we get in trouble as Christians because we will preach a good message, we will talk about the word, we will shout in church and say we had a good time, but then our mouth will get us in trouble and take away everything that we're trying to do because we're using our mouth the wrong way. We're speaking negative. We're backbiting. We're gossiping. We're talking about people. This is killing everything. And the devil loves that. But the, when we learn to confess the word, to confess the word is to agree with God and say the same thing that God is saying about every situation, really. So we'll say, oh, the children are bad. But then the Bible said that children are hurted unto the Lord. You know, now we do say it. So I got to repent. <laughs> Uh, we got to do better. We have to do better. We have to say what God says about that in every situation. If the money is tight, we got to say he supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory. I might not see it right now, but as I begin to speak the word, my life will start changing and turning around. You can cast out devils every day. We can get enough oil to put on people so they can slide on this so easy. But there's not going to be any kind of deliverance if they don't learn to watch what's coming out of their mouth. The Bible said by our words we will be condemned or by our words we will be justified. So we got to learn to confess the word. And so that's the next step. To confess the word of God. And that's even daily. If you don't know what to confess... There are scriptures that are written in book form. You can get a prayer. There, uh, there's some good books out now. John Eicher has a good uh, prayers to route demons. Cindy Trim has two good books. One is uh, uh, Rules of Engagement. It's an excellent book. Uh, there's another book out, um, Commanding Your Morning. There are prayers in there. There's positive confession in that book that you can say daily over you, over your family, over your children. You should be doing this on a daily basis because whatever you're speaking is what God is going to bring to pass or what the devil is going to bring to pass. The Bible said the power of uh, life and death are in the tongue and they that eat it, they that love it will eat the fruit thereof. So it's safe to say whatever condition that we're in right now is because of the things that are coming out of our mouth. So if we're not seeing good things, then we're not going to be seeing good things come to pass in our life. And so even if it's in that home with your husband or your wife, after some point you've got to vent to some one person. Let's try not to vent to everybody. Some people, everybody they see, they complain, and that's, that's not good. Find one person to vent, and then after you vent, say, listen, now pray for me, uh, and I'm going to start saying something positive. If your wife is not being good, then you get that prayer song, get Proverbs 31, and put your wife's name in there until she start acting better. She will like better if you start speaking better. It's, but it's going to come out of our, it's got to come out of your mouth, what you're saying. Same thing with their husband. You can't continue to just go around and say mean things about him. You tear your home up. So that's the next step is uh, confessing the word of God. you got to learn to do it. The, the, the next step is uh, crucifying this flesh. This is a good one. You got to put the flesh to death, not this body. People are thinking about it when the Bible said, uh, deny yourself, take up the cross, and follow him. It's not talking about this physical body. It would be nice if uh, we had to. I think about the scripture now where people a lot of times don't understand it. It said, if your right eye offend you, pluck it out. If your hand offends you, cut it off. It's not talking physical because there'll be a whole lot of people blind without hands and they still have it in their heart. Right. It's talking about the things that are, that is causing a person to lust. It could be the television. Maybe you're looking at something on that TV that a Christian shouldn't be looking at. You turn that off and you're not going to keep having trouble. Whatever's supplying these issues, 
Sometimes it could be a negative friend. If you have a friend that's a backbite and a gossip and they complain, and so get away from them. Find somebody uh, that speaks positive and can help you grow in the Lord. You got to get away from people because they'll mess you up. You got to crucify this flesh by fasting. See, that's a dirty word <laughs> in a lot of churches. They don't want to hear nothing about fasting because we want to eat all the time. But uh, even though we're not just speaking about the physical body, when we speak of the flesh, we're talking about the inherited nature that we got from Adam. Our father Adam, when he fell, he, we, we, everyone that was born into the world was conceived in sin and shaped in iniquity, and now we have to deal every day with this flesh. Our spirit got filled with the Holy Spirit, but our soul has to be saved continually every day. That's what you were talking about a few minutes ago. Every day we have to fight with this flesh and bring it under subjection. Because when the, you wake up in the morning, the first thing the flesh will say if you got to go to work is, I don't want to go to work today. I want to, if you're not careful, the flesh immediately starts as soon as you wake up because you'll hit the snooze when you should just get on up. And next thing you know, you're talking about, I'm late all the time, but you keep hitting that snooze button. See that? You're listening to the flesh by listening to, the, by hitting that snooze button. Just get up. And then go on and do what you have to do. Bring the flesh under. And so we have to deny ourselves, take up the cross, and follow him. Through fasting and praying, we have to obey God that kills the flesh. When you fast and pray, it makes the spiritual man stand up and be the senses be more keener, and it, it, it brings the flesh down to where we can do the things of God. The next step, which is number six, see, we're doing good today, <laughs> is to develop a lifestyle of praise and worship and prayer. The Bible said pray without ceasing. So this doesn't mean on my job that I go in my, on my job and say, Father God, in the name of you, you're going to get fired. <laughs> Because you're not hired to go to the, but in your heart, you, you, you pray all the time. You pray without ceasing, see? And uh, you want to pray, there's different ways to pray. We can pray in the spirit in our secret closet at home, or some people think they got to wait and go off and get in a closet. But in your shower, you can pray in tongues. While you're taking your shower in the morning, while you're taking your bath, you can pray in tongues. Then while you're driving to work, you can pray in tongues. And you pray without ceasing when you get to work. You're not going to be doing it out loud. But in your heart, you're praying for all day long. This is how you, and your mind, if you're not praying, then you're thinking on and meditating on the Word. And this is how, it, you, you, it, how you'll have a good day. People say, oh, I'm just having a heart because they're doing everything but the right thing. So this is what you want to develop a lifestyle of praise. Praise is an attitude. People think praise is I gotta wait till Sunday so I can go to church to praise them. You better be praising them all through the week or it's not gonna mean too much to do it just that one day. But it's an attitude of gratefulness, thankfulness, appreciation, adoration toward God. We walk around like that daily, all through the day. Every time I, there, there used to be a song we sang when I was uh, first saved. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. That's all day long. I'll praise him every time I think about the goodness of Jesus all through the day. I should praise him then in my mind. I don't want to get too carried away because I might would get to shouting on the job today. But but you but in your heart you do this and and, and, and and keep that going all the time. Then when you get to church on Sunday, the first little something where somebody say, Oh, magnify you or just go off. Why? Because you've been so used to doing it all through the week. That's, that's where we want to get. And then the, the seventh thing is you want to continue, have a continuous lifestyle of fellowship with God and, and, and to be able to work in your spiritual gifts. You've got to find out what your purpose is in life because a purpose, a person that does, that does not know their purpose, somebody else will give them one, see? And if you don't know what you're supposed to be doing, but people, I see you doing this, and then you're going to be in a mess. But you need to have, you need to fast and pray and ask the Lord, why did he send you to the earth? He sent you here for something that only you can do. No one else can do what you are called to do, right. Apostle. Nobody else can do what I'm called to do. 
Everybody needs to find out what they're called to do and then they need to work in that calling. So to be able to do number seven, you got to have fellowship with God and then you need fellowship with a local church family. That after you find out what your calling is, you can exercise your gift and every joint will supply what the other members of the church need. If you do these seven things, you're not going to have any problems with demons trying to get back in. And I hope that that wasn't too concise, but those seven points right there will keep you where you need to be and to keep the devils out. Now, if anybody have any more questions, we'll talk about them today. But if not, this has been a good session. What, about, what, do, you, what do you say, Sean? It's always good. We're talking about the word. Um, and, and for those who don't understand how powerful this is, I know for a fact there's three people who, who uh, really came at me with these questions without even knowing that we were, we never discussed, pre-discussed what she's going to talk about on the show. They, they tell me what she's going to talk about. <laughs> so it's not that type of show. This show is, is Holy, Holy Spirit powered. You know, whatever God want to do, that's what he does. So um, I don't want to put no names out there in case they're watching. But um, one, for instance, I kept giving the DVD the first show, the first one on Deliverance. They kept giving, throwing it back. They kept saying, just pray for him. I need to deliver. I kept giving the DVD. I kept throwing it back. I kept seeing it back in my possession. I was like, they, like one of your first things said, they had to be humble. They had to be received. They asked me for deliverance. And everybody's used to the traditional formula. Of, I'm not going to sit there and pray over, you know, for no 10 hours for you to know, run back to that joker. You know, no, nah, no. Nah. Here, the, the Lord sent the pastor, the doctor, and she did it. We recorded it. Here it is. And, and I, don't want, I, don't want, I want you to know. Well, it shows you right there if a person yeah, well, would not give you, would not take your advice, that they're not humble enough and they really don't want help. Because if you really want help, you'll do whatever to get it. Really, you will. You know, short of you know doing something that's wrong, we never want you to do anything simple. But Jesus cast spirits out, and we are able to do that as well. But then we don't, we, I don't see where Jesus wrestled around six hours, five hours, uh, two days to cast the devil out. And I'm not going to waste time with that either. A person has to be ready to stop doing what they're doing. And if they don't, and they're saying they want deliverance, it's probably they're just saying it, but they really don't mean it. I was in a service one time where a preacher came in. I was mad because we was taught to tear with people forever. This preacher came in. <laughs> they got in the prayer line. He's like, what you want? They told him what the problem was. He said, up and out. They fell out, got up. I was like, what? Something wrong here. All this time they had me hold people down. They do all this crazy stuff. They were spitting up and going, this dude ain't break a sweat. They give him the offerings and all kinds of all this bucket full of money. I'm like, all he did was up and out. They, they delivered. I was like, something wrong. We serve a different God. I want that Jesus. What is work we doing? That's all he did. He's an old man. He's all relaxed. Like, what? What? Up and out. They was like, oh. That's it? Sweating. <laughs> so I was like, back then it taught me, I was like, the old way, I guess they did what they do to do. That's right. But see, one thing about it, uh, why Jesus didn't have to wrestle a long time with spirits is he had a powerful prayer life. And if you're doing what I'm telling you, Jesus sometimes would pray from 6 in the evening and he would get up early in the morning. Is it because he didn't have to go to work? Well, he was working all the time. <laughs> He was in full-time ministry. If you're in full-time ministry, I know for a fact it's 24-7. Because at 3 o'clock in the morning, you might have to get up and pray for somebody. Or you might have to get up and leave your house and go cast out something. That's a whole other sermon, full-time ministry. Yeah. Some, you tell folks about full-time ministry, well, I got bills. I'm like, yeah. all right, well, then well, you stay with your bills. I'm going to full-time ministry. If a lot of times people are wanting to go in full-time ministry today, I'm going to be real about it. Some people think that it's easy and they can come off their job and that they can get money and don't have to go to work, but you're working all the time. If you're not if you're not doing well on a secular job <laughs> and doing above board, I mean really, if you go on full time ministry, God calls us to even greater right. greater work than what we did for the secular. So if you're not doing too good with your with your uh, day job, you're not ready for full time ministry. Well, our cameraman can attest to the second guy who called for deliverance. This guy, oh, he was so persistent. He kept calling. He called this number here. He said, um, he may have saw it on YouTube. He said, I, I want to get, ain't y'all deliverance ministry? I didn't feel led to, to deal with him. I don't know why. I give him my number and send him to our church. We'll work with him. We should have, but I got a friend. I ain't going to say his name. He has a church. So I 
I tried to connect him with him. This man was so persistent. We finally hooked him up, and if it, you know, we will send him over your way. But, if, if it don't um, but he was, he was so persistent. He's like, give him our church service times. So I was like, okay. I don't know if I was supposed to send him to him. I just knew I wasn't supposed to fool with him <laughs> for whatever reason. But that's something I learned in, in, in my years of ministry. Because I, I deal with a lot of pastors. So just because they call my number don't mean they're coming to me. And so I try. I, I want to put you with the best people who are going to get you delivered. Because, you know, like I said, I'm not going to sit there and, and fight with you, no know, four or five. When I see somebody say up and out, I'm not going to be sitting there fighting and fussing with you. But Jesus said, hold your peace and come out. That's right. all he did. Sometimes you might have to, he might have to, you might have to ascertain what spirit is in the individual. And he would get the oh, name like name. he did for the man, a legion. But other than that, cast them devils out and go on, you know. <laughs> But you, but to do that, you still will probably have to do a little. Jesus taught right, people right. too, see, what people don't understand it. Now we know Jesus didn't sit around one on one and cast out devils and get everybody. He didn't do that. It was thousands of people sometimes that would come, but he would sit them down and teach them, see. So after you teach them a little bit what to expect, what to do, then all you have to do is pray. You can get those spirits out. It does not take a long time. And you, you can even collectively in a in a church service, you can uh, uh, people can get up and say just say a prayer, say certain things, and then we can command the demons to go, and they can go that way. But uh, uh, it doesn't take long, and it's not hard to get them out if a person is really serious. Willing. If they're willing to, to to get them out, it's not hard to get them out now. So. And the last person who just contacted me was this morning before our church service. Um, his wife had already emailed me and was like, look, this joker need to get delivered and he got to go. And I, <laughs> I was already praying, so I was like, I can't really go at him because she already came at me. And so it was odd that he had um, contacted me and said, um, I need help. And I said, I already know. Uh, copy, paste the link from our last show about deliverance, paste it right in his thing, enter. I was like, there you go. And is, he, is, is, is he filled with the spirit? He filled with something. But, it, but to see, because if you're filled with the Spirit, those steps that we went over last time, that's all you have to do. You can pray prayers. That book, John Iker, if that's the way you say his name, Bishop Iker, book, Prayers to Route Demon is an excellent book with different confessions and affirmations, renunciations in that book. As long as you are serious and you're fasting and praying, if you say that, those spirits will have to leave. Now, if they won't leave that way, then you might need some help. And that then you need to go to somebody that can work with you. But uh, deliverance is here. It's been available since Jesus Christ walked the earth. He went back to heaven and he said, uh, All power in heaven and earth is given unto me. He said, Go ye therefore. He has given the, the, the Christians that power now to be able to uh, cast out devils, lay hands on the sick, and they recover. And speak with new tongues. So we're doing that. We're doing what the Lord has called us to do. So we can do that. So uh, uh, you got a question? Come on up. Got one for a question from before. Okay. Can a uh, can an individual have so many demons and spirits inside of them to the point where they can't? They don't have like the uh, mind control you know, so to come and get delivered. True. True. Uh, that's you. That was in the fire. Right. If, if it's if it's certain cases, they wouldn't be able to do it. We would even have to pray. If it's a child that's underage, uh, they probably wouldn't even have the faith for themselves. The parent would have to have the faith. Remember the Syrophoenician woman that went, and remember the young man that had the deaf and dumb spirit in the Bible. It was his father. He, he looked at the father and said, "Do you believe that I can do this?" And even the father. He must have that he must have been having some real problems with that young <laughs> young child because he said, "Lord, I, I, I believe, but help my unbelief." Because he really wanted help, but he that, that boy must have really been putting him through. But uh, and, and when when he said that, the Lord cast that deaf and dumb spirit out, and he said, "Now, when it comes to a deaf and dumb spirit, this kind goeth not out but by fasting and prayer." Some of these spirits you're not going to be able to get delivered if you don't do some fasting and praying to get them out of your house. So that's another thing. And it takes it takes some days of fasting. I'm not talking about no partial fast 6 to 6, 6 in the morning to 6 in the evening either. You're going to have to go some days without food and, you know, several days without food to get some of these spirits out, but you, you can't get them out. They, they will have to leave. 
I had a shameless plug. Ironically, that's my first book that I authored was on fasting. And I didn't know why God had me do my first book on fasting, but I came from an apostolic and uh, coaching upbringing where we fasted to where we were skinny. Same. So Same. <laughs> I almost made it 40 days and 40 nights. By then I got vain and God made me almost die. <laughs> I was like, okay, Lord, I, 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 I just wanted to do it because I could. Then I got to day 27. I was seeing stuff. I was like, what the Lord, is that a cow? <laughs> <laughs> I tapped out, grabbed some two liter, I about died, because that two liter about killed me drinking that for the first time after fasting. Well, we want to say, if you're going to fast, that uh, we want to give you a word of caution, that you should be prayerful and, and be led of God to fast, because like you said, I've heard of cases of people going on fast, dying, and they, the Lord didn't put you on that fast if you died. <laughs> See, uh, the people going on fast, losing their mind, that's not the Lord. See, not, that's the key to it. If you marry, talk to your... That's don't, another thing. Don't, you come home, you want to I'm going to fast. Don't touch me. What? Very, don't you wait? Very important <laughs> scripture. You're out of the will of God if you don't get permission from your companion. It, that you saved on, or unsaved. That's right. Saved or unsaved. Christian women saved, you married or unsaved. No, that's and you right. Can't be, I'm fast and don't tell well, you. He, look, he, about, he, about to be, he about to be fast and that door and find him as woman. Listen, he <laughs> is perfectly, he's telling you perfectly right. Because uh, they used to sing a song, my body belonged to God. But that husband or wife is saying it belonged to me too. Right. So if you're going to fast, you're going to have to get permission, especially if you're going to go on uh, over 24 hours fasting. The 6 to 6, he might work from 6 to 6. You can fast, that's not going to be no problem. But I'm talking about any type of extensive fast. You want to pray about it. And you want to, anything I recommend, I don't know, you know, unless the Lord tell you something different, anything over a three-day fast, you need to have some water. You need to consecrate water and drink some water and pray and take water because um, your kidneys and things could shut down. If the Lord tell you only really three people, in the Bible, do we remember even the Lord spoke of, of a 40-day fast? Right. And that was Elijah, that was Jesus, and maybe that was Moses when he was up on the mountain. But if the Lord don't lead you on that, you don't want to fool with that 40-day anyway. <laughs> you know what hurt me? What really hurt me is being around people. Because like you said, your your senses are heightened. And, uh, you know, you can, I mean, really, you just, I felt like a super, super person. But as soon as I went around or even took a phone call, it's like I took on all their junk. It's like I felt all the virtue just means everything drained I out. drained out. All your faith all, and everything. That's leaving. why Jesus, even Jesus went away. He went up on, he, he didn't hang around the folks. They talking that's about right. crazy stuff. Man, I can't wait to get home. Make me a double cheeseburger. I'm like, what? You smell that food? I know, you can't. No, you can't do that when you try to do a long fast. You can get away from people. That's I mean, right. even their breath, you're like, what's that minty? <laughs> you know, you, everything is meat. Because <laughs> you're, 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 I mean, I did it. I was, I was young and crazy. I was young. Heightened. When we was the sons of thunder, we had this guy into Wayne with us. We was just crazy. We used, let's try this. You know, when you're young and you're in Christ, because we love God so much, we just want to try anything. I thank God for grace. Woo! I should have been dead. <laughs> just try anything to, to try to get close to God. And then, you know, you for a bunch of guys, you used to challenging yourselves. Like, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And we'll see. But, you know, God, God uh, shined on us. That's why this deliverance is so important, because we're a little older now. And when I when I you're not I tell people all the time you're not gonna outlive the knowledge and wisdom of God you're always gonna learn the things you need to do to, to maintain right. in the, in this life and uh, people right. well, I've been saved since I'm like is that why yeah. you can't stop smoking yeah been married all you've been saved all these years walking with you I've been walking with Jesus a long time that's, that's all, maybe that's all they just walking and not <laughs> see these uh, Christianity a religious spirit is what's taken over most of the churches it's a religious spirit. And it's a spirit that knows her protocol, knows how to act good on Sunday, know how to preach, prophesy, and all that. But then it's what we do when we're not in church. That when we live in right, this is what we really, we don't want to have a religious spirit because it can't live right. See, just like what you're saying, it'll do all that in church, but then to get out of church Ooh. and it'll still fight, That's cuss, the whole other show too, every other thing. I, I don't get it. I know people go Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, Sunday night, then Monday morning, you're like, didn't you just go to church? It rubbed off already. Yeah, it rubbed off already. It's the same person that was testifying. Is that long as last? And you've seen it in church. We've heard people get up and testify on the mountaintop. I'm ready to give my life for God and all this kind of stuff. And then before the night is out, they about to lose their mind. They got to call somebody. I don't know if I'm saved, but I know what 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 is it that's working here? Deliverance. That's why deliverance is key. I mean, yeah. it, it's very important. Like I said, we didn't pre-discuss what. 
Dr. Hunter was going to talk about, but this is something that the body of Christ, right. I mean, we, we can start January and go all the way through dealing with deliverance. This is a constant. That's why you guys make that big money fleecing the flock. They make money doing deliverance services. Well, it's true because uh, what they told us when we first got saved as a Christian couldn't be oppressed of a devil, but they can. I'm not going to say you can be possessed, but they can be oppressed of demons, yes. Because all backbiting, they won't, they won't hit on this. Backbiting, uh, um, uh, gossip, those are spirits, demon spirits, you could say. Right. See, and if you would look at it like that, people would quit playing with it. Even anger is a spirit. The Bible said, don't make friends with an angry man unless you learn his ways. These are spirits that can transfer. So the people that you hang out with. The cliques. Can, if they're doing these things, then these same spirits will take you over as well. So we got to realize that uh, these things are spiritual. We need to get them cast out. We need to fast them out. You know, we need to pray till these things are gone. So you might have to probably miss a few meals to do it, but it can happen. It will happen if you'll go through the process that we talked about today. Like I wrote my book, it's fasting. Like you said, it's, it's a bad word in the body of Christ. But let the doctor say you got to fast before surgery. I bet you're going to fast. Yeah, yeah. That's what amazes me about us as Christians is that they let the world tell the, like I, these thugs that I witness to in the street sometimes, acting like they so hard. I said, when the judge say all rise, you're the first one getting up, pulling your pants up, and taking your hat off. So why when you come in the house of God, you act like, oh, why well, I got to take off my hat? I'm like, you like, God ain't got no order? Yeah. I said, yeah, you can sag and drag, but you've you been going over here by a month, you need to get you a belt. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's, you know, you want to change, let's change. Yes. You can't yes. play with deliverance and transformation because if you do, 40 years down the road, that same dude still sagging and dragging. And, this, and, you, and, and that religious spirit does. I know how to say. shout. Them church have, folk, you them, them church folk. We have seen church folk 20 years later, they have not grown an inch. <laughs> Just they're right where they used to be, but that's a religious spirit because the Bible said the path of the justice is a shining light that shineth more and more to the perfect day. If we're not if we're not growing in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then we'll find that we're just going through a religious spirit of going to church and that's it. Right. Now wouldn't it look silly a big old grown man in third grade? Got hair, got a mustache and beard, he in third grade. Like shouldn't you be like in twelve or graduated by now? But in church you got third milk all these folks on milk speaking some meat. You know, ain't nothing wrong with me. You need to get delivered, dog. You been in that same seat, got your name wrote on it. That's what the book of Hebrews was talking about. You know. Well, we're gonna get out. We're gonna be talking all day long about this stuff, but it's a constant thing. And um, if we're gonna try to have this DVD available, and these folks been wearing me out. And it's, it, that's that's how God works. God is always before. He's the answer before there's a problem. And she came and spoke on this stuff, and these calls starting to come in. And she's right. I had to repent for that. I need to give him her number. <laughs> so you're the person that God is blessing with this revelation word and, the, and I'm, I'm going to sit them right there. they got some strong men over there to hold these crazy folk down <laughs> yeah if you come we'll set up an appointment with you and we will work with you to cast out these things or whatever problems that you're having if you're in this area you can uh, call us at 614-218-4322 um, you can also call 614 614- 622-1261. Uh, you can also call our church, but it might be a minute for us to pick up the voicemail for that, which is 614-252-8300. Uh, if it's Monday through Friday, you might catch us quicker at 614-252-6300. Four seven. That's a lot of numbers. And we'll, we, we will set up an appointment. One of those numbers will work for you. <laughs> we're going to get Dr. Total Life Bitch like a 911 number. Her number will be 711 for delivery. You got 411, 911, it's going to be 711. Because we, we will set up an appointment. We don't want to be doing deliveries at 3 o'clock in the morning and all this kind of stuff. It's a stream emergency. We may pray for you or something like that, but we're not going to set ourselves up for failure. Uh, we will set up a time with you and meet you at our church and pray these things out of you. If you need help, we, we will be able to help you in Jesus' name. Amen. Is that from the bus line? It's a, the bus stops directly in front of our church door. <laughs> so you can you can come on the bus and get help. You won't have to come on the bus because you know what? I'm not doing no Facebook deliverance. <laughs> I'm not doing no text and deliverance. I'm not doing, I don't care if it's 2012. If you don't want to come and get delivered, you don't want to get delivered. The you can text Jesus. 
The address is 2260 East 5th Avenue, Columbus, Ohio. It's right on the bus line. You can stop right at the door. We'll set up an appointment with you. Come and you will get delivered. If you want to be delivered, the Lord will meet you there in Jesus' name. Amen. Because you come to me, I'm going to say up and out. <laughs> get, up, get out this door. Go down to Total Life Ministries. And if you didn't miss any of those numbers, you can call 614-847-2057, and I will give you one of her five numbers <laughs> to call so you can get your deliverance. Because I believe that this is anointing, and this is something that's going to have to take place. I've been speaking prophetically about things that's going on in 2012, 12, and I feel like when Moses was on the mountain, and they thought he was the only one coming up, some of the folks got the, the jewelry all together and built up a little thing to worship. And he came down, he's like, what in the world's going on here? He said, who's on the Lord's side? And they did, get him. That's what, I think that's what's about to happen because some folks don't even want to be saved no more. Every excuse in the world, but you don't understand. Like, what you mean I don't understand? I gotta, I gotta keep myself holy, so you do too. Yeah. You know, you can't, you can't just be doing. Well, she, she cute. I don't care. Hell ain't nothing cute in hell. Talk about it. <laughs> folks don't want to be saved. You need every excuse. You need to get delivered and, and return to your first love. That's all it is. Right. I'm not no super holy Christian man. I just love Jesus. Right. I tell gays be trying to hit on me. Ooh, I thought like, you better go on. And he said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. It's not hard. It's as hard as we make it. I mean, all of us that's, that's mature, you know, some of us got jobs we don't like. Some of us do floors all night and wake up horse. There's different things that go on in our life. <laughs> There's different things that we do that we take ourselves through this. <laughs> God mess with my buddy over here. <laughs> but, hey, you know, I, I, I told him, I said, I'm like this. Jehovah God, he's my provider. It's something the scriptures did. You know, we preached the Sons of Thunder. I'm going to close with this. And that broke that man broke down every name of God off the top of his head. He looked back, oh, why y'all so quiet? I'm like, we taking notes, man. What's the world going on here? We done broke down all those names of God's names without, with, off memory. But, uh, you know, our God is an awesome God. He ain't never lost a case. I mean, none of us would be saved if he, he wasn't a deliverer. I mean, our Lord knows. I, could, I don't got enough paper to write all stuff out of there. And you know, I have to fight for my salvation. I have to stay delivered. You know, girls be calling, you know, comments on that stuff. I'm just like, yeah, well, you, you don't look that good. I mean, it ain't worth it. I tell them flat out, I'm, I'm that type of person. Hey, what's up? Nothing. Jesus. I'm like, you, no, it, ain't, it really ain't worth it. You, you do. You need to. I mean, it was the other way when I was in the world. I always tell dudes this when they say, but she was hitting on me. I was like, are you gay? No. I said, well, why are you trying to be bisexual with Jesus? You can't have the devil and the Lord. You got to make up your mind which one you want. You can't have them both. No man can serve two masters. The Bible says you're going to love one and hate the other. Oh, yeah. I can't, you know, I get offended when the, well, then you need to get offended when the devil come at you the same way. Like, dude, are you crazy? I done paid tithes all these years. I've invested in this. I'm not trying to go That's back. Right. That's right. But it's not hard. <laughs> they got to come check up my comedy show. <laughs> When we get out of here, we can thank you for tuning in today, Living Epistles. Oh, this is the joy of the Lord that you're experiencing right now. You can have this when you're delivered. But if you're bound up, ain't nothing funny. Oh, they get on my nerves. Well, you you want to stay on your nerves, but we're going to be delivered, and the joy of the Lord is going to stay on our strength. Amen. But um, I'm here with Dr. Hunter, the pastor of Total Life Ministries, and their wonderful congregation. We hope you enjoyed the show. Some of y'all had to push away from that, that football game, but it was worth it, because scoring a touchdown ain't going to get you delivered. Matter of fact, you probably lost some money on wetting them Buckeyes. But anyway, we thank you for tuning in today. God bless you.